Hi folks, welcome to Diets Are Fattening, our Monday live uh, communication where we go over the different things that are uh, necessary to stop dieting and stay in your happy, healthy weight range. Um, we do this every Mondays, noon Eastern Standard Time live, so please join us and uh, ask your questions. If you're watching this um, live or watching it later, doesn't matter. Uh, great to have you with us. So today I'm going to reach down and get my workbook. We're going over, uh, we're in chapter five. We're going to go over um, a couple of the exercises in that and we're going to take questions and just again go through um, the really important things about building your healthy thin mentality. Uh, for you guys who don't know, I was a dieter. I worked for Nutrisystem for um, for about a year or so until I saw that it doesn't work. It actually makes people who are really disciplined and um, great dieters uh, feel like it is their failure that they gain weight back when in fact going on a diet is absolutely the best predictor of weight gain. Can you believe that? Okay, I'm going to plug this in. Hey, okay, let's see. Hi guys, I hope that um, you guys can hear me. Can, if someone is there and, okay. Hi Michelle, let me make sure this, do you guys um, hear me? Can you, can you guys, can anyone say they can hear me? Hold on here. Interesting. Just waiting to hear. Can anyone, what, what do you guys who are watching, can you say uh, if you can hear me or not? I don't know why this is being weird. Um, I'm going to start and I'm going to hope that when you guys say yes, ah, thank you. Thank you so much. I hate it when technical difficulties. Okay, welcome. This is our Monday live uh, stream where we go over questions and um, just talk about the different uh, reasons that you should stick with building your healthy mentality and stop dieting forever because dieting does the opposite of what you want. Dieting is the best predictor of what? Weight gain, right? Not at all what you signed up for. You thought you'd go on a diet, you would lose weight, and then you would keep it off. Guys, it just doesn't happen. If you look around in your life, you can confirm that. And again, when you go through the workbook um, here with me or on your own, you see that. You see that, in fact, no, dieting in your life has actually led to short-term weight loss and rebound weight gain. And I know I say this every week, but I also know that you guys hear the opposite message over and over and over again. So I always want to reiterate that right off the bat. If you have any questions um, while we're going through this, just go ahead and post them in the chat and I will see them and I will answer them. Um, so one of the one of the biggest questions that um, comes up over and over again, so I'm going to talk about it again today, is when you've been a dieter and you've disconnected yourself from hunger and you and I'm telling you as in order to regain a normal happy healthy relationship with food and eating you need to reconnect with hunger right that is that is the hunger and satiety because that is your guide that is what you were born with to help you stay healthy and strong in your happy healthy weight range and if you stop doing that you're like a you're like a ship with no oar, with no rudder. You're, you're like just out there floating around and you have to reach to, to rules and diet companies for advice because you're like, well, I, I don't know when to eat. I don't know what to eat. That is called a broken relationship with food and eating. It's everywhere, guys. It is everywhere. And um, just to go over things I say a lot, but it used to be more female. It used to be that women were more subjected to this because it was dieting was kind of a girl thing. I hate to say it, but it was, especially years ago. Now, sadly, you know, I hear it from guys all the time as well. It has now become an equal opportunity um, handicapper. In other words, we we welcome in all this advice from the diet industry and food industry and even our doctors. And I'm not want to go against doctors, but you know. Where is the training that, that shows people that the, what they really need to do is connect with hunger and satiety? It is, it is beyond normal. It is the most normal thing in the world. And we're taught to think that it's not normal. And we're taught to think, oh, well, you can't do that. You have to instead um, eat, eat this and this and this. And, and then, you know, we attack the food industry as well, which deserves attacking. I 100% agree. But you guys, even, I, I know this isn't the ultimate goal, but let, just hear this. 
Even terrible food won't make you fat if you eat in response to hunger. So even though eating great food and healthful food and organic foods can be really great for you, and I definitely do that, let's not put the cart before the horse. First, get into the quantity, the quantity of food, because if your goal is to be happy and healthy and live stress-free, one of the most stressful things you can do is put yourself on a diet and then deal with the diet itself, which is stressful. You've been there. This this site and my message is for people who have dieted. So if you've dieted, you know what I'm talking about. If you've dieted once or 50 times like I did, you, it's stressful. And gaining weight back afterwards is extremely stressful. It's it's the worst feeling. And what's also really stressful is going up and down. Up and down weight loss is is terrible for your body. That's something that all doctors, you know, mostly would, would agree with. If you said to, at your doctor, is it stressful on your body to go up and down and wait? And they'd say yes. So these, I'm dealing with things that we 100% know. We 100% know that's not good for you. We have 100% know it doesn't feel good, makes us unhappy. So with those truths right there, the, the most common sense, reasonable way to get around that is to normalize your relationship with food and eating and stop putting yourself on a diet. This is not to say giving up. This is not to say, like some people who are intuitive eaters say, just eat what you want. Our society's crazy. It makes us all feel bad about being overweight. Guess what, guys? You know, it's reasonable to want to be a happy, healthy weight range. I saw a picture very recently. Um, I should post that. It's, it's a picture of people at a beach um, in the, the 70s. It might have been the 60s. I could, it probably was the 60s from the look of the bathing suits. And you don't see fat people. You just don't. I mean, you see maybe a random stout person, but most people look like they're in their happy, healthy weight range. Why? Why is it that the more as a culture we put into trying to be healthy and trying to be in our happy, healthy weight range, that we're all getting heavier? And the person who posted this picture was talking about what the food industry has done to us. But I want to go back to, okay, the food industry is, it has delivered us some food that isn't as nutritious. It's not, you know, the way it used to be when you had the, you know, farm-raised animals. They were treated reasonably, and then they, it was it's food to table was much closer journeys. All that stuff. Yeah, I know, I know, and I agree with that. But let's get the quantity settled, and then we can go after, you know, getting the great food that we deserve and that that should be available to us. You know, the companies should try to promote instead of, you know, packages of preservative things. Okay. But my point is that if your goal is to be happy, healthy, and in your happy, healthy weight range, stop dieting because dieting is perpetuating that in your body. It is perpetuating that binge and that, that cycle of, of um, low, low calorie eating or less eating followed by periods of eating way more than you even want, but you just, you don't even know why you're eating. You're just like, well, I don't even really like this, but I'm just going to eat this because it's here because I'm going to diet next week. All these things, you guys, get your head around the fact that that cycle is strong and it's enabled and promoted by everything around you. And, you know, there's been many times in the course of human history that people have believed something that is not true. And this is a great example. Going on a diet, and, and modeling um, that behavior for your kids is really negative. It does not get you happy and healthy. It does not have you have permanent weight loss. It has temporary weight loss, which you remember, it's like a drug high. You know, the first time you've lost weight on a diet or any time, you, and you run into these people, and I run into these people, and I don't ever try to talk them out of it because I know someone on a dieter's high is, not, is no longer listening to common sense because they're like, oh God, I have found it. This diet works. This diet, I'm losing weight. I'm not even hungry. You can't talk a person out of out of that state. I've been in that state. I remember it very well. And you're like, oh, well, this is the holy grail. This is a diet that works for me. I finally found what works for my body. You guys, it always crashes. It always crashes. That's the thing. that It took me so long to figure that out. It took me 25 years. So I really empathize with looking at this and going, this, you know, eat when I'm hungry. Stop eating when I'm not hungry. That can't be right. But you know what? Yes, it can. And again, getting away from that mentality of under eating, then overeating, then under eating, then overeating. Under eating, meaning being on your diet. Overeating the time after you diet, and you're like, oh God, I'm, I'm just going to eat this because I don't care. I just dieted for three weeks I, and, I, and I lost weight, but today I'm just going to eat. I'm going to eat this. 
and you think, okay, you're just going to eat that that one day, but it turns into two days. Then it turns into a week. Okay, well, this week, but you know, okay, September 1st is coming around and back to school. Okay, and that'll be my fresh start. And then, okay, for Christmas, I'll have time to, or holidays, whatever, I'll have time to get into shape. All that cycle that we do to ourselves, and we do it over and over and over again. We think, okay, this is the way, guys. It's the same story over and over and over again. And that's what, even though it seems really obvious, and if you go through the workbook or you've done any kind of journaling about your, or writing down or trying to keep track of your weight and what you're doing and how you're staying where you are, you'll see it. You'll go, okay, yeah, I went on a diet last year and I was really thin for a week and then I started getting weight back and then I felt so bad. It was all me. It was all my fault because, wow, if I can be on that diet and lose weight, why can't I stay there and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's your body fighting back and your body will always win. It will always win. So in this, in this um, message here, we're focusing on, on taking that stress away where you normalize eating. You normalize that beautiful relationship with food and eating. And instead of being worried and um, stressed around food, you start to see it as the true incredible joy that it is and you start going to parties and events and you don't worry anymore that oh i'm just going to overeat i'm not going to go to that party because i know there's going to be food that i love there it, it actually turns the complete opposite that is what we're trying to do here so um when you're when you're going through your um in your head and, and you lay in bed at night and you're you no know, i used to do this okay and last night i do this on mondays because monday was always the beginning of my diet right so you know sunday nights i would lay in bed and i would have whatever books that i or book would okay this is the book for me that this is what's going to help me through now and it would be something like oh god the zone diet or um keto or all all the to name it i did them all and, and you that would be like your little motivator and you'd sit there and you go okay so this week it's, it's going to be this it's going to be food combinations i'm not going to eat pasta or any carbs with meat if i eat this is i'm thinking of the zone diet now if i eat carbs or something i'm going to eat just them and then if i want you know meat i'm going to eat at a different time and that was the theory that stuff gets in your stomach and you know affects each other makes you sick oh you know i bought it i bought that bowl i did so i i if you're watching me and you're going well, how, how can she know? Believe me, I dieted for 25 years. I did all of them and lost weight on most of them and always gained it back. That's the thing. That's the thing that if you've seen our little logo, it's, that's, that's the thing that no one talks about. Before picture and after picture. And that's where our short-term minds stop. And no one says, okay, what's the after after? What is the real picture? What is the picture that um, is is the true reflection of what happens after you diet. And it's not that you're thin, guys. It's you start gaining weight back. And when you do that to yourself, your body and your, your um, fat ratio gets worse too because you lose fat and muscle, you gain fat back. So that's, you know, I think that's a big reason why people struggle later in life with getting, um, you know, especially they say, oh, menopause or whatever the equivalent is for men, nanopause, whatever it is. People start getting heavier around their waist and all that. I don't know. I think it's just a theory, but I think a lot of that has to do with people who've gone on diets and gained and lost and gained and lost. And, and that ends up being the easiest fat for them to gain back. I don't know why. And I'm not really trying to um, win that argument. It's just a feeling I have when I see people that, okay, I know that person, they've dieted a lot and they're getting really big in the middle versus, you know, having it spread out more equally. Well, maybe that's part of it. I don't know. But my point is, don't do that to yourself. There is no, as you age, you know, it's a beautiful thing because if you're not aging, then you're dead, right? So let's be happy about that. That doesn't mean you have to get heavy. And that's another point here that I'd like, you know, if you guys who are whatever age, whether you're younger or older, don't look at your life like, wow, um, when I get older, I'll just be heavier because everyone around me is. That's not true. Your body changes, your hunger changes, and you respect it. Ruth Ann, back in the 50s and 60s, yeah, followed their natural hunger. I remember even having snacks at night. Right. That's exactly right. In the past, people were not um, so fearful of food and food was different back then but again let's go about the quantity if you if you um if you ate dinner and you were you were not hungry anymore there was much more of a um letting it go just stopping eating because you weren't sitting there looking at your your um, noom app or your or whatever food journal you're doing oh well 
I, I should eat this and this today. Maybe I haven't had enough nutrition or, or wow, I, like this used to happen to me if, when I was doing food journals. Like at the end of the day, if, if I, I would be laying in bed, I read about this in my book, and I would count my calories for the day. And if I go, oh my God, I have 50 calories left. I can't believe that I forgot to eat that, la eat that last 50 calories. I would get up and go downstairs and eat that last 50 calories. I think how stupid that is. And, I, and I'm not stupid, but I did it many, many times. Because in my head was so, um, that message of dieting is the way to go was so incredibly ingrained in me from my family, from my mother, from my stepmother, from my mother-in-law, from my stepmother-in-law, everybody around me. That I, okay, well, I'm, I was allowing myself, let's say 1,400 calories a day. Well, I'm gonna get up and eat that 50 calories. I can't have it tomorrow because it's today and it's 11.30 and I better eat it today. It's just so stupid. I mean, I'm calling myself, I'm saying that about myself, but I know you guys do that kind of thing too. So that disconnection between actually laying there and thinking, am I hungry? And maybe I was hungry then, but I had no idea. I didn't know what hunger felt like anymore. All I knew was deprivation felt like. And I dealt in the currency of deprivation instead of the currency of hunger. And hunger is such a happier thing to, to have as your tool versus deprivation. Think of it this way. You are, you have the beginning of your day and as, you, as a dieter, and I know you guys have thought this, you get up and you go, okay, I have, um, I remember Richard S Simmons used to propose this, you know, you'd have calories to spend. So where am I going to spend them? So you'd treat it like money. And when it was, it was gone, then you were deprived. Your money was gone. You had nothing left to spend. That's not how hunger works at all. What hunger is different every day. You need different amounts of food depending upon what you're doing, what your energy level is, what your, what your output is. So instead of saying, I have, let's say, um, you know, 1400 calories to spend or whatever number, it doesn't, I'm just making that number up. I have 1400 calories to spend. And then you go through your day and it's kind of like, okay, well, I don't want to spend too much now. Well, what happens? This happens to, to so many people. You don't eat enough during the day. In the day when you're physical and you're doing stuff and, 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 you're, and you're working out or working or whatever you're doing, you go, well, if I'm going to eat 400 calories at lunch because if I eat 600, then I won't have enough calories left for dinner and I like dinner. So I'm going to eat 400 calories at lunch and then eat, I'll have 600 calories at dinner and I, those other 400 I'd eat at breakfast and I have a snack or whatever all that bull is that we do to ourselves. That is nothing to do with actually what you need in that moment. So at the end of the day, the biggest change for me with a diet mentality versus a healthy thin mentality is at the end of the day, I'm not roaming around my kitchen looking for food because I've satisfied myself throughout the day. And that is what you want to do. You don't want to put yourself in deprivation mode and use that deprivation mode as a, as a, um, as, as your tool. You want to use hunger as your tool. So you go, okay, I get up, I'm not having breakfast because I'm not hungry, or I love breakfast, I'm having a big breakfast, I'm gonna have 800 calories worth of breakfast. I don't care, I'm hungry, you're not, wait, hold on, you're not saying I'm having 800 calories, but you eat, and in your head, because you've been a dieter, you know you ate about 800 calories. It's hard to get rid of that at first, but don't worry about it. In your head, you're, you've got this feeling of, wow, I've already eaten 800 calories, I only should eat 1,600 or whatever the number is, so I've already eaten half my food for the day. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. What you did with a healthy thin mentality is you got up and you were hungry and you were really hungry and you ate to calm hunger down. It doesn't matter what the calories are. It only matters that you were eating with hunger. And then go on with your day. And you may find that, wow, you ate such a nice amount of food. It felt so great that you go for a long time without being hungry again. And then when you are, you require less food than maybe you would have on another day at that time of the day because you really, you gave yourself what you needed the moment that you needed it. So all this stuff is talking about staying in the moment. Don't worry about the future. Don't worry about the past. Don't worry about saving calories for dinner. Don't worry about not having enough in this moment. Just say to yourself, I am eating now because I'm hungry and the only thing that matters is that I'm hungry. And it doesn't matter what I eat. In the future, I let's say you're home and, and you're hungry and you don't really have anything you really love. So you eat something that you don't love. But hey, when you're hungry, everything is pretty good, right? So you're eating that and you go, okay, well, tomorrow, in case I get hungry when I'm home and I want to make this a better experience, I'm going to make sure I have whatever at home for me available. So you start taking care of yourself, not in the deprivation of, oh, I'm going to make sure I have 
um, broccoli and lemon juice because, oh, that's not that many calories and I can chew a lot and I'll feel good. No, you don't think like that. You think, no, what am I going to, like, I, I would like to have something here that I would really enjoy eating. So you make, you take care of yourself and it's, what would I really enjoy? Well, maybe it's broccoli salad with, you know, ranch dressing on it or something that's fattening, but you don't worry about it because you're not a dieter. You're a healthy, thin mentality person. And you know darn well that eating that broccoli uh, with with any, you know, with some ranch dressing on it or whatever, I'm just making food up here, is, is a perfectly lovely food and nutritious. And it's a sad thing because I say this a lot, that I think a lot of times we don't eat as many vegetables as we might because we're told not to put butter, not to put salt, not to put oil. You guys, put it on. It's delicious. And your body will know exactly how much you ate and you will eat less later. Yes, you will. Um, let's see. One time I had like three calories left and I literally ate a grape. That's really funny. <laughs> yeah, been there. A hundred percent. That's that's. Thank you for sharing that because yeah, that's... Well, all of us dieters, I know we're all different and we have different likes, but there's so many commonalities because we are all human and eating is is deep within us. The instinct to eat, the instinct to enjoy food is so deep within us that it's really important and we've ruined it. We have absolutely ruined it by all this, this diet BS. It just makes people money. It doesn't make you happy. It doesn't make you thin. Now, I get this question a lot. Well, I have, or I get, I get more private messages on this kind of question. I have a friend, and she just lost all this weight, and it's so hard. And I, and I, or and I just joined Weight Watchers, but I'm really struggling. I just can't do it to myself again. Okay, guys, you see a friend, and he or she has lost weight. Just wish them well. Don't try to talk them out of it because you're not going to. Just let them alone. Just say to yourself. I, that's tempting because she's losing weight, he's losing weight. They look really happy. They're on a dieter's high. You know the end of that story. Just let it go. And I, this, when I first was doing healthy, thin mentality eating for me, that happened to me a few times where I'd see somebody and go, hmm. But I kept saying to myself, no, no, that's not going to work. That's going to be short term. And sure enough, I'd see him again, and I not didn't wish this for them, I promise, but they'd be heavy again, or heavy, or back to their weight, and they'd be in a grumpy mood, like, oh yeah, yeah, it was great, I was really thin, I don't know what happened, and then, um, or you see someone who like, like the Oprah commercial where she talks about bread, like, I love bread, and on Weight Watchers, you can eat bread. Guys, is that really what you're going to follow? Uh, someone who acts like bread is this vicious treat that wow, with Weight Watchers, you can eat it now. Bread has been a staple of humanity for a very long time. And if you think it's a, it's reasonable to say you're just giving up bread or you're going to go on Weight Watchers and pay more money for a small amount of bread or follow whatever it is that, that is out there right now, step back. So what I'm trying to say is step back from all these things that mess with your perspective. Your friend who's losing weight, you see Oprah talking about bread. I forget what the third thing was I was just talking about. But step back from that and go, okay, wait, here I am. I'm, I'm a smart person. I can look around and go, okay, they're doing that, but I have done that. I haven't done it once. I've done it five times or like me. I don't even know how many diets I went on, but so very many over 25 years. Finally, you just go, okay, no, I'm not doing it to myself again. This is wrong. It's not me. It's the paradigm I'm working in is actually incorrect. So if you guys are out there wondering, well, um, you know, how could, how could this be right? Just, just, it took me a long time to get to this too, but I didn't have anybody like me telling me this. So I'm hoping I can help you. Um, Eva, I'm, I'm trying to quit Weight Watchers and I'm scared to stop. Weight Watchers gives me anxiety to step on the sale. You guys, if Weight Watchers worked, there'd be a lot of thin people walking around. Do you know how many millions of people have done Weight Watchers? And, you know, I have... There's so few people who keep weight off with Weight Watchers. And from my experience with those people, they're really rigid. They're joyless around food. And there are a very few amount of people who are willing to do that, are willing to just live a life like that. I don't want that for me, and I don't want it for you. Um, stepping on the scale is anxious because when you, when you get on a scale, you're going to have all this judgment against you or for you, either way. It's going to be good news or bad news, and it's going to change the way you look at the next time you eat. And that's the opposite of what you want. You want when you eat to be about how you feel, not the number on the scale. And not how you feel, like happy or sad. I don't mean that. I mean, are you, what's the word? Are you hungry? In this moment, 
I don't care if you're working out later. I don't care what you did yesterday. You don't care that there's a big cake on the table that you like cake or you don't care that you, what, nothing matters. Nothing matters. It's the simplest answer. When people ask me questions, it always comes down to this. Are you hungry? I ate like that while visiting my parents in Belgium. I enjoyed my mom's good walk for fun and end up losing three pounds in, a, in three weeks, bread and all. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Right. This is another thing that's really important about a healthy thin mentality. When you deliver yourself away from the food obsession, weight obsession, what am I eating? What does my app say? Should I eat another grape? All that stuff. When you take yourself away from them, food gets less important. Now, I love food just as much as many of people who I know who are heavy. I love it just as much. I'm not saying food isn't amazing. It becomes less important because you're not worrying about it so much. So it's just so much nicer. It is so much nicer to just live in a world where food is a pleasure, it's a joy, and it doesn't affect you like it does when you're a dieter. And this is, you know, this is a problem that is getting worse and worse, and that's why I always say please like, share, subscribe, because I know there's people out there who, who would be helped by this message, and I really wish I'd seen this mes message like when I was, you know, 20 instead of when I, instead of figuring out for myself when I was 40, you know, and, and I say that, but I did have someone, I, you know, if you guys have read my book, my grandmother was a healthy, thin mentality person naturally, like many of her peers. She was born in 1900. So you know, at least I had somebody there. I don't, I, I don't know who I run into anymore who's naturally a healthy, thin mentality person. I don't think there are very many left, if any. And I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a rebirth of this. I was for many years not a diet, many years not that way. So if I can get back to this with a huge diet mentality that I had, so strong and so um, life impacting, then so can you. Now I'm bending down and get my workbook. I want to go, if you guys um, who know about this, it's a little workbook we have that goes through different ways for you to help you connect. And this is what helped me when I was doing this and that's what I want to help um, you. So this was a really big realization for me. What is the one thing that healthy the mentality people have in common? that naturally thin people have in common. What is the one thing? Is it they eat slowly? Is it they eat sitting down? Is it that they're vegans? Is it they only eat meat? Is it that um, they're born, you know, a certain time of day? Whatever. What is the one unifying factor? And you know what it is? It's they eat in response to hunger. That's it. Some naturally thin people eat really quickly. Some eat really slowly. And I'm talking, you know, it's hard to study naturally thin people here because as I just said, there aren't any left. But I'm talking about years ago when my grandmother was a kid. This is how they ate. It was in response to hunger. And the, the deprivation mode that we put ourselves in on while we're on a diet changes all that. And you end up seeing food. Food is, becomes a threatening relationship because if you don't eat, you die, right? So in you is triggered whether you like it or not. You're going to die if you don't eat when you put yourself on an artificial uh, famine, a diet. It's, it's immense. So that feeling you get sometimes where you just, you can't stop eating, that goes away when you stop dieting. Guys, listen, it goes away. I had that so intensely, like if I had dieted and I would eat stuff I hated. I would eat so much stuff in one day. And I'd be, well, that's great. That just took my whole week and I ate more in one sitting. I know you guys have done that. It's because of the diet. This is a really important saying. You don't diet because you binged. You binged because you dieted. That's how you get there. It is not normal to sit down and, and load yourself up with food in an uncontrollable way. That is not normal. That did not used to happen to people um, unless they actually were in a real famine. And that's a whole other story. But here we are, lucky, lucky us, in a world where there's plentiful food. You put yourself on a diet. You're going to binge. You're going to gain the weight back. Don't do it again. And you don't have to just listen to me. Just take a moment to look at your own personal history. So... Um, Let's, you know, for examples of this, or like, I know this happened to me all the time. If I'd go to a party on a Saturday night, you know, I would have a drink so I would feel free and just eat. And then Sunday mornings were always like, oh, great. Now I got to start all over. The three pounds I lost last week, oh, well, they're back. And how do you gain three pounds in one day? You know how? Because your metabolism drops. One of the stories I tell in my book is when I, the, the last time I, I died and I couldn't do it anymore was I had been so good and worked out and went on a trip and gained, I think it was like eight pounds in just a few days, less than a week. And I was like, 
How does a person do that? When you do the math and scientists say, you know, a pound is 3,500 calories, so that's 3,500 calories times eight pounds. There's no way I eat that many more calories. But your body, when you put yourself on that restriction and work out a lot, starts grabbing on and holding on to calories so you will live. It's a beautiful defense mechanism for, for starvation. That's how we all survived all these years. But it doesn't do us any good now, and it actually hurts. So as you're considering this, and again, and I'm trying to put as much information out there, and please go to our website, dietsoffightening.com. In the image that I'm, I am using for the thumbnail, you'll see I'm wearing a necklace. That is our um, stay-in-the-moment necklace. It's just got lip balm in there, and you open it when you're eating or you're out, and you're like, okay, I'm trying to stay connected here. I'm hoping it'll serve as a reminder. Put some lip balm on. Just go, just what am I doing here? What am I doing before I just dive into this food? Let me just think, am I hungry? And the biggest issue with that question is staying in the moment. Not, am I going to be hungry? Not, should I eat this because I'm going to be somewhere and I might be hungry? Not, none of that. It's in this moment, are you hungry? So I'm trying to provide as many tools as I can to help you through this because I know it's hard, I know it's important, and I know it's lonely because not very many people know the reasonable common sense approach that I'm espousing. But it's, it's, I'm telling you guys from the bottom of my heart, it is the way out. It will make you, I, it, there's, there is not a better gift you can give yourself. Because when you think about life and what food is to you and what you have to eat many times a day, it's not like you are, you know, if you're an alcoholic or smoking cigarettes or doing crack or whatever, and you can just cut it off. You have to eat. You have to figure out how to do it in a way that's healthful for you. And guess what? Happy. Because it's a big part of life. It's a wonderful part of life. And I know I missed out on it for so long, and I, I totally have regrets about that. I hate living with regrets, but I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I have regrets about it. And when you get your healthy thin mentality, you're going to look back at these moments spent here and go, you know, I'm so glad that I, I, I opened my mind to the thought that this common sense actually is valuable and that you did this. So thank you guys for being here. Let me see. If, let me make sure I didn't have another question. It's very hard for me to wait to hunger. I hope I will get it eventually. Donna, I understand that question. First of all, sometimes I think people who are new at this think that the hunger has to be just so powerful for it to be real hunger. And I say this a lot too. If you're sitting there and, and, and you want to eat really badly but you don't think you're hungry, take a bite of something. If your taste buds ignite and, and your mouth salivates, you were hungry. You may not even recognize that as a hunger signal because it's not just stomach growling. That is not the only sign of hunger. For me, it can be that I just feel weak, um, that, that I just can't get my mind off food. Those are hunger signals too. Mother Nature wasn't stupid enough just to give us one hunger signal. She was going to make us eat. So it can be growling stomach. It can be whatever. But make sure that you know what yours are. And you do that by a little experimentation, like I just said, by um, backing into it, by saying, okay, maybe maybe I'm hungry, maybe maybe I'm not. But if I take a bite of this, I'm going to get the answer. Because it's it, when you're hungry and you eat, it's always really, really good. And that's what you want. Is this really, really good? Is my mouth just going, nah, thank you? Or am I kind of going, ah, eh, that's okay? And then you'll you'll get better at it. I promise. Do you know? Be your own detective. Do some work in figuring this out. Um, I lost forty by a plateau now gaining. Back, but you and I talk. Yeah. Oh well, that's good. Her therapist likes what I'm saying. Great, that's good. It's very yeah. Um, if you guys have just come off a diet, you're gonna gain some weight, unless you just become a dieter for the rest of your life. And I'm gonna tell it to you straight. So I know that stinks, and you hate hearing that. But if you've been on a diet and your body is, is especially a low calorie, obviously they're all low calorie, but for a long length of time, your body's going, whoa, what's going on here? And it's going to hold on to calories. The best way to, to manage that is to dive into this deep and steep and say, I'm, I, I just did Weight Watchers. I lost weight, but I know that's a recipe to gain weight back. I'm going to immediately start connecting with my healthy thin mentality and mitigate the damage that did and, and try to keep weight gain to as little as possible post diet. But I'm telling you guys, um, I, I will always tell the truth. That's the whole premise of this is that dieting makes you gain weight. Dieting, like I said in the beginning of this video, is the number one predictor of weight gain, right? That stinks, okay. But you can do it. Listen, if I can do it, Eva, Donna, all you guys out there, Ruth Ann, I already know you're doing great. Um, all you girls, all you men, 
if I can do it, you can do it. I had the worst diet mentality. I, you know, I'm sure you, you may think you have the worst. I, we all had really big diet mentalities. I say had because you're going to get rid of yours. Okay. Come back. Join me next week. Come with to our private Facebook groups. The links are below. Um, and let me know um, questions, comments, and I will, I will see you back here soon. Thank you for being here and, uh, and we'll talk soon.